Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 7 of the Apex Hour. And this is the E3 special, the E3 extravaganza. That's one of those words you feel stupid when you use it, but I always want to use it and I never get to use it. Extravaganza. Now's the time. But now is definitely the time. I feel like if you're going to use extravaganza, this is absolutely the time for it. So we're going to be talking everything E3. We're going to be taking a look at some of our most anticipated confirmed games. Obviously, outside of the games, we have the potential for people to bring some hardware announcements. There was also some stuff that kind of already happened today. So I guess we can talk about some of that too, because that's kind of all a part of it. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a big old, big old E3, just craziness. We, it's, it's a nice thing, right? We have like three of us who all actually still get excited about E3. You know like what's kind of interesting to me? I feel like E3 is spreading, right? It used to be you got these couple days of press conferences and then you got the show floor. But now and now and now it seems like people are, there's pre E3 announcements, there's post E3 announcements. It's like E3 just doesn't stop in the summer, you know what I mean? I think it's like E3 itself is kind of dying, you know, actually. I always see like the industry people talking about that, like how like it, like E3 as the actual convention is basically just being torn apart by everybody doing their own thing. And I feel like maybe in a few years, we just won't even have like, we won't even call it E3. It'll just be like game season or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, right, like I wonder if it's just gonna season. turn into like a, a trade show for consumers and all the industry stuff is just gonna do their own broadcast and Twitch streams and control their message the length of it they're not reliant on a slot you know within microsoft's press conference it's like hey why don't we just do this from our studio and save tens of thousands of dollars yeah the money side of it's got to be insane man and i know a lot of them just like you know they rely on just like volunteers and stuff and it's like or you can just yeah just stay <laughs> stay in your office and just make good make trailer announcements you know like i mean you saw like i think during the bungee release i think they were touching like a hundred thousand something like that you know and that's just like the Bungie community if you know Sony or Microsoft's gonna say hey we're skipping but we're just gonna do a, a live thing like that you know they're gonna get hundreds of thousands of people that just tune in from home and they can control it all on their end that's yeah. where I see it going yeah I agree with that there's no reason to I mean people like if you're people are excited about the stuff regardless now you know it's not really I mean we're definitely well beyond the like you know niche thing like that's done and over with like you have people who like love to follow games and, you know, they're going to be there on Monday when Square Enix announces that Avenger game, even though it's not, like, technically during E3. And the same with, you know, anything else that happens, like, outside of EA, you know, or E3. Even EA, you know, just being like, oh, we'll just do EA Play. Like, you know, we'll just do our own little thing, basically, at E3, but make it our, make it something else. So, right. I guess speaking on that, right, I guess we could touch on some of the announcements you already got, like, today. So, Sedia came out and revealed its, like, Founders Edition, also its two pricing models, one of which isn't going to be available until a little bit later on, the free version. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it seems like there's a market for that, right? I know, Count, you were asking people about that. I've seen some people, like Rami Ismail. Rami was talking about it. He, you know, seems into it. I feel like if you travel, I like the idea of the free version. Let me just, I guess let me say that before I'm like, I don't care about the other version, but the free version, the 1080p version, to me was like, that makes sense. Cause I could see myself using that. Like when I'm away, I'm not at my PC, you know, just 1080p gaming, like just to hop on, even like, you know, speaking of destiny, just like, Oh, Zer's here this weekend. And I'm like away from home. I can just hop on my phone with my Bluetooth controller, go to Zer, buy this stuff and leave, you know, but the paid version, it just doesn't fit like, I guess my current gaming space. No, I think you, you hit it right on the, I think the travel piece is what's most interesting to me. I'm just thinking about, you know, I know it's not out yet, but I'm going back to my parents' house in Cleveland next weekend for Father's Day, spending it there. You know, hey, parents go to bed, want to hang out for a little bit, bust open your iPad, bring your controller with, and you can just log in, play some stuff. You don't necessarily need to haul around your Xbox or your PS4 anymore. I think that's pretty enticing. I don't necessarily see myself ever really shying away from, you know, having the next Xbox, the next PlayStation, keeping a gaming PC, stuff like that. I still think that's you know that's my forte that's why i like playing on physical hardware but there's definitely some appeal for it i think for those people that might not be able to afford that kind of stuff yeah part of me like gravitates toward what you just said where it's like it's more of a the optional thing for you but never the main thing but i think that's just because like we're not you know maybe we're not that casual audience that perhaps steady is trying to like tap into that you know that audience that maybe buys one version of one console like every 12 years you know they they bought the xbox one like two years after release you know maybe that's the audience who says oh i don't mind 
a 9.99 you know subscription and then i gotta buy the games anyway to me that just like that was like the big thing that just comes across like a huge turn off it's like oh nine dollars a month you do get some free games but you also have to like buy the games and then if i ever run out of subscription i have to use the free version which is only 1080p <laughs> and i'm just like uh yeah and uh you know again maybe if i was in a position of like i could only afford one console that would make more sense but like sitting here with all of the consoles and you know a gaming rig it's like yeah it's just kind of more the travel thing you guys remember on li on live yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> there's actually an article so in I, game informer about it this month did you guys own no i never no. did dude i would i don't even so, know how much it was dude i was i i kick-started it day one owned one of those things because i was in that position like when at the time when that thing was coming out um I was always really interested in PC gaming, but I never owned a PC capable of doing that. It was like, I was, I don't remember if I was in, I can't remember the year on it, but whatever it was, it was like, I didn't necessarily have like the funds to be able to go out and get a gaming PC, but they had the same promise, right? It was, hey, locally, you don't need any gaming hardware. You can play the most current games at nicer specs than what I was able to do. And I remember buying that thing and I was just like, I think the hardware or like the service worked, but a lot of it fell on your ISP. If your internet hiccups or you have old, you know, infrastructure in your neighborhood or your apartment, wherever you're living, and that can't stay up, the experience of when you had to, you know, experience a buffer or the screen to get all pixelated was awful. And I'm really curious on how they're gonna, how, they, how this thing is gonna perform. Yeah, if you go on, so if you go on their website, they have like a recommended chart and you can also do a speed test um mm -hmm. for like the variants you're gonna get i had the tab open and i closed it give me a second because like um, I, I i nailed them. i mean those speeds are like obviously way lower than like what you know what i get i should be able to meet them it's just like the random hiccup or like that little packet loss you might get for a, a split second you feel it 100 times over when you're in the middle of a game and your game just pixelates out of a sudden it might be just instant but it's a real annoyance and yeah, one of the things I, mean, I hated about online think about watching netflix dude or youtube or anything like it doesn't matter how like good your internet is i've got gigabyte and there will still be days where i sit there i turn on netflix we start watching a show hulu's like even worse for it and for 10 minutes i'm watching like 720p on a 4k tv which looks terrible, you know, like, like you said, it's and it just makes pixelated. me think you're playing Apex and all of a sudden, hump, a little quick buffer and you just rage because <laughs> something that, you know, your ISP throttled you for a, a second and you lose a fight or something. I just, that's the stuff that makes me nervous. And I think that's where maybe I'll jump in on the free version, test it out and then maybe decide to double down on it i'm not sure yeah that's where it gets confusing too so we're talking about like more of a casual audience right appealing to this but does the casual person even care about their internet speed i mean i i have family members and friends like that who literally still have 10 megabit internet and for 10 megabit which is the recommended minimum you get 720p apparently 60 fps so they must always push the frame rate over the resolution if that's what's going to be uh and stereo audio when you get up to 20 you get 1080p with hdr 65 point once around and then apparently 4k only requires 35 which i don't those numbers just seem kind of dubious to me because 10 megabits is like bad that's like <laughs> yeah and not to mention minimal. too you're talking about like multiple people in your house potentially using the internet you know like we don't live a day and age where one person is using it. if you live in a, a house with multiple people you've got you know jane on her ipad and billy playing fortnite and mom and dad watching netflix it's like <laughs> right you know i think only your most hardcore going into your router and like setting priorities on your devices to make sure you're getting it. Yeah, it's, I, that's, I never really thought about that. But yeah, the casual people that they're appealing to are probably gonna be the ones most affected by it. That's interesting. So yeah, I guess we'll see with that. Um, inside of the steady announcement was the Destiny 2 stuff, which I think is pretty, pretty special. There was like a lot of, it was just, that was a really cool announcement. I think a lot of us kind of looked at Destiny after they left Activision. We were like, you know, are they gonna just like go be the bungee that we've always wanted them to be and the entire reveal today seemed like that i mean they like even took shots at you know the way that they had to do things in the past and like like we were just talking about you can now go on to steam because they're just going to trade it over to steam they're leaving BattleNet, and you can already pre-order destiny 2 with the new expansion with warmind and chris of osiris plus the season pass for 34 dollars so like 
<laughs> the future of destiny for 40 bucks <laughs> it just seems i don't know that just seems crazy i don't you guys aren't you guys played a little bit of destiny right you're not you guys were over here and there here and there yeah it's more I of a destiny one for me same yeah i wasn't a huge fan of destiny 2 and spending other stuff to be honest but i i did i did watch it and i like the direction they're going well it was happy to see them like i was happy to see like old school bungie you know not like activision controlled bungie that was nice yeah i mean it, i think it's pretty clear that like the changes they made at the beginning of destiny 2 were driven by you know business of like mm -hmm. how many people can we get to play our game you know that that short-term like really silly business mindset too that all these big publishers have of like how many people can we get to our player game for all of three days? <laughs> Not like, you know, how are we going to sustain a good audience for the next like 10 months? Just like, no, no, let's just make it like really accessible and easy. And then everybody, you know, stop playing the game. Obviously after like three months, destiny two was like in a pretty rough spot and Bungie kind of just held on and slung their way through and then dropped forsaken. So yeah, I'm like really excited. It was cool too, to see them like, dude, never in the past, like under any of the publishing houses that Bungie's been in, have they ever really been able to show off like super early work in progress stuff? I mean, they showed an exotic hand cannon. They're not even sure if it's gonna work that way when it comes out. They were like, yeah, right now it sets you on fire when you shoot people with it. It might change. I was like, what, wait, what? Did you just show us something that was like unfinished? Like, <laughs> that's Yeah, new. that felt like vintage Bungie. He called that a vid doc. I always called it a vid doc, but that kind of felt like their old school ones where they were open just like hey let's show you our game and talk about it not the like well you can't quite show that because we're not ready to announce that yet kind of stuff they were it just felt more casual relaxed you can see they felt like this weight of the world lifted off their shoulders that's the vibe i was getting from them yeah it's crazy i was talking with eric uh we were sitting down watching and i said you know it's funny because they like signed on for that like 10-year contract they made it through you know most of it uh and we kind of all thought like oh yeah 10 years of destiny like that's crazy but really it's going to be way more than that like this is basically the beginning of something new, you know, <laughs> it could be another 10 years. Like I could easily see Bungie, you know, just carrying this like way, way into the future and turning it into something very special. And that's like exciting because all the stuff they did demo, which was like just the beginning, like, you know, the new mod system they're doing, like a bigger push for stats. They showed off like the finishers, so, like adding more flair to the player, you know, like those are all the things that made us all fall in love with like MMOs back in the day, which is that real sense of like, you know, like being that person and having like those little small pieces of control, like the idea of destiny doing that. That's just like, I don't know. I'm super excited. I'm like having a lot of fun playing the game right now. So this was like perfect time for them to be like, Hey, by the way, we're also just like doing all this crazy stuff going forward. So that's, I think that's just about everything we got now. Uh, so next, the next step, I guess, if we move chronologically on the road, that is E3 will be EA play Saturday, right? That's like the next big thing, I guess. So, uh, star Wars, you guys ready for that? They released that little art teaser that kind of looked like their movie posters. Yeah, I guess it's the co it's just the got, cover art. Got right? me kind of hyped. Yeah, oh. I'm not gonna lie, it got me kind of hyped. Good, good cover art. I <laughs> like it. It's very Star Wars, which is nice. I mean, like, I feel like some franchises, you know, you're just like, just do the thing you've done, and we'll be stoked about it. And that's totally how I felt about the cover art. It was like, yeah, that's Star Wars cover art. It looks really good. Definitely like it. I like the vibe coming off of it. I feel like that's one thing that seems really consistent with Fallen Order is like, I don't want to say just like, you know, dark is in like, you know, Xbox 360 area dark, but there is, there's kind of just like a real good sense of doom around it all. And I guess there should be, you're literally a Jedi, like, you know, hiding. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely digging the vibes. What do you think you were going to see? Do you think they're going to do a, like a live gameplay loop where they, somebody sits down with the controller and plays a 10 minute segment? What do you think they're going to Man, I feel like knowing, like, let's say, let's, I guess let's take it on, you know, knowing Respawn, like the way they've done it. I feel like we're just going to get a gameplay trailer, you know, but there's a part of me. Do you feel like there's a party that's going to be bummed if that's the case? Because I think that's what people expected to see at the Star Wars celebration. Everybody was like, yo, show me the gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Okay. They didn't show it there. I think looking back, probably fine, right? They announce the game they get some of the logistics stuff out of the way introduce the characters so that at ea play or whatever they're going to show this weekend they don't have to do that stuff it's like okay we already know what your game is you've already set that context my head just goes to like okay now show me a slice of gameplay because i think that's what's going to get people hyped and if it's just like a flashy trailer or something with like gameplay snippets i feel like people are going to be bummed I think it, I think unfortunately I think I feel like it's gonna be disappointing. I feel like they're gonna do the gameplay trailer, and then what's gonna happen? Because this seems to be the way that EA handles EA Play, unless they change ways, is there'll be behind the door gameplay demo, and we won't get to see it for another month. 
That's you're just going to have some suit come up there and tell you about how yeah, they're going to use a bunch of buzzwords about how epic the gameplay is and you won't see it. That's what happened with like Anthem last year. They demoed it behind closed doors and then they released it like later on. Uh, you know, they did it through like some of the creator stuff. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if there's anything happening with Game Changer stuff, um, you know, like via via fallen order because it doesn't really fall in line with like any of their previously established brands um but that doesn't mean that they couldn't have people like you know like jack frags he's like probably one of the biggest game changer dudes he gets like every game he got to do a lot of battlefront 2 stuff there's also a few battlefront 2 uh you know like streamers content creators so maybe they'll get pushed to see it but i mean unless they just change the way they do ea play which i think they should because i think ea play is terrible like i get the idea that like you want to have the event and people go to it that part of it's fine but like the media end of it where we all get to see this stuff is just awful. It's exactly what you said. It's like, you know, they do like their, their, you know, we watch Madden for 45 minutes. Some dude comes <laughs> yeah. out on stage who I don't even know. And not because I completely ignore sports because he's just ran some random person they like happen to get. And then they finally show, you know, like 10 minutes of their most hyped game in the last like, you know, 10 years. It's, I don't know. It tells you why you should care about the game instead of showing you and letting the game yeah, the executives tell you why you should be really good at that. There, man, there is such, like, that's probably, like, the, every part of EA is, like, shite lately. Like, not are they just bad business people and manipulative, but their PR team has just been absolute dog shit lately. Like, they just keep burying Battlefield Five by making really poor decisions with how they handle a World War II game. They just keep, just stacking it up, man. So, yeah, I have no confidence, but maybe I'll be wrong and we'll actually see, like, a 10-minute gameplay trailer. I guess we'll see. So, I was looking at, I was looking at the list, right? So, they're kicking it off with Star Wars um apex follows it right they've got yeah i think then battlefield they're doing madden fifa and the sims how do you feel tony about um a game that was near and dear to your heart not being on it and by near and dear i mean anthem no apparently they're there shocked. apparently how come they're not on that list? i don't understand yeah i don't know if they're i think maybe they're not necessarily showing anything in the public i think they're just showing stuff behind doors because they already made their pts announcement so i think everything that could be out in the open about anthem is now out in the open uh, they're like oh, okay. their PTS is live now, and there's some promising changes in there. I think they still have a long way to go, and they're aware of that. And they just decided like let's just do the PTS and have the people come along with us who want to. So I don't think I there's any. I was kind of thinking that they were going to use like that opportunity to like bring back some good faith for the people that maybe have lost it. Of like, hey, let us show you a little something for those people. You know, maybe like me, that's like haven't gone back, and all I see are the, the negatives. I, you know, I wasn't even aware that that stuff was out on their PTS. So it's like. Yeah, they just they like just released like it. Like me, that like come win me back, you know. <laughs> they did the whole like they have the cataclysm out now, which is cool. A again, I just think the problem for them is like you, they're past the point of winning people back by just showing new content because no one really, no one really, even if somebody says they left because there was nothing to do content wise, it's not. You just left because the content that was there wasn't replayable, you know. Like that's their weak spot. Like the reason Destiny was able to survive, in my opinion, was because. The game was still fun to play <laughs> like shooting stuff in destiny is like phenomenal there's a yeah. small part of that in anthem like, flying is amazing and like but the the loop isn't there you know it's just not complete so yeah i don't know what we're gonna see at you play from that if, like what announcements they can make i just i can't imagine them having anything to make like we just know how long it takes for them to develop stuff in frostbite so that's kind of a bummer, unfortunately. Yeah, Bums me out a little bit. It just needs more time. I think it's just one of those things where if anything's gonna, ha if anything can happen or is gonna happen, it's gonna still be another like four months, five months. You know, it's gonna be. It's it's very much a no man's sky. <laughs> like, sure. no man's sky took a long time to like get really good again, and it kind of happened slowly. And then they had that big like, okay, we did all this cool stuff, but now we're doing this really cool thing. I kind of feel like that's what they need to do, but uh, it's gonna be hard for them, like with. You know, They've you got, got an uphill battle for they, sure. And plus, like, they're going against the exact people that, you know, the management team, when they first started the project that was Anthem, told them that they shouldn't try and compare themselves to. Like, did they, you know, somebody somewhere at, at Bioware was like, yeah, don't look at, you know, Diablo. Don't look at Destiny. And it's like, well, actually, like, what do you think people are going to be thinking about this September? You know, if you release any content for Anthem, they're going to be thinking about the fact that Destiny is now $34.99 and has all these crazy new rpg elements you know like it's like yeah they got a lot to fight for fight against for sure the last part um just thinking about that's near and dear to us is um right what do you think uh what do you think we're gonna see teased 
for Ape. For Apex. Yeah, that's right. We got the... I mean, it seems like they're going to maybe do even more than a tease. It kind of comes across to me like they got some big announcement, like big season two announcement to make for Apex. Maybe new map. Their hype always has me worried. I know, OP, we always <laughs> talk about this. Mm -hmm. But they're like the masters of teasing. And like, for whatever reason, and maybe that's just because we, we crave and want their stuff so good. We enjoy their stuff so much. But they always come out swinging like, oh, man, can't wait. If you guys think that this was cool, wait till you see what we're working on. And then for whatever reason, like, they always seem to come out a little bit flat. And I don't know if that's just because our expectations are so high for them and maybe what is out there to everybody else is like really cool but we just don't see that but i'm always a little bit nervous when they start hyping and then we get comes out and she's like hey here's a new legend like okay thanks you know i don't know what do you guys think yeah i guess it's hard right like to i mean you always want to like hype whatever it is you're going to release that's just like i guess you know like marketing 101 like you don't want to like just come out and be like yeah, we got this new legend, <laughs> but I it just At the same time like these little teasers of like, yeah, oh, you just wait. It's, it's like, all right, when you phrase it that way, it makes it think like you're going to just drop some huge thing that nobody saw coming. I think you know I, what I mean? That's why I think in that case, it's better to not say anything. I know like the community always wants. Well, just tell us like something. It's like, yeah, but what if the only thing they can say is just wait? You know, it's like. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think that definitely puts them in an unfortunate position. I mean, I'd like to think at this point, considering how much time has passed, that like with season two, they're not gonna just. I don't. I just don't see them just launching season two. Like season two, new legend. That's it. I can't see that. Like I feel I like new legend. In one of the posts, yeah, Jay was teasing. Like, didn't he say something in one of those like patch notes that he said you wouldn't think that the map would stay forever, did you? Or some sort of like wouldn't he stay the same forever. That way. Yeah, he did. I could see I them. Gotta imagine they're showing that doing an overhaul would... for the map. You know, I feel like that's. I have a feeling good we're point. gonna see the future too. Like a peek at it, right? Like, yeah. That's... What are you thinking, OG? I think it's gonna be a very like cryptic teaser with just like little snippets, like they've been doing with a bunch of different things they want you to throw together and be like, oh, okay, I see what you guys. Like that little Watson tease they tweeted. Yeah. Yeah, little shocky, shocky, shocky character. I, I can see cool. that for sure. Yeah, I mean, I just see like season two announcement, you know, like trailer for season two, new character, Watson, you know, with season two. And then like you said, like if season two comes with, a, you know, the map getting overhauled, I feel like that would be something you would definitely show at E3. Um, but then beyond that, yeah, I think it would make a lot of sense to like talk about, you know, what's beyond that, like in terms of events, you know, like limited times events. So even. He, yeah. And here's what <clears throat> my taker, not that I'm nervous about this, but I think this is the time, and we talk about this a lot, that I'm not necessarily asking Respawn to go out there and start tra transitioning to this Fortnite model where we're getting something every single week. But I think for the most part, right, when this game launched, its numbers were, you know, astronomical. We had 50 million players. It's the highest game on Twitch. And then, you know, okay, dies down a little bit. Season one's coming out. That was their opportunity for the Battle Pass to show you what they're working on. And, you know, we've chatted many times that it was pretty lackluster, nothing too exciting there. And now, okay, time for them to remedy that. They're at the time of E3, the biggest stage in games for the year. I think you're right, OP Deck. They need to come out and tease or somehow set expectations of what's to come. Because I think mm -hmm. this is that moment, like that make or break moment. If they fail another season, this game is going to have been out for, you know, six, nine months at this point. I think you're breaching that bridge of like, if they want to keep this game as popular as it is, this is the time to like bring those people back that are losing faith and it, like i said it doesn't have to mean that they're releasing something every week but i think this is like okay you've got the stage like don't screw this opportunity up you know i have i have a feeling like th this is just me this this is me theory crafting right so uh, was it yesterday or the day before it was announced that that apex is going to be at the espies and yep there's no way that they're going to ha have their competitive format where you're just running into public lobbies and stomping people. Like, I feel like custom games are coming with season two. I, I just can't, I can't picture it not having a proper format. Yeah, it's hard because every game already does that, right, though? Like, mm -hmm. they just, like, play with, like, shitty formats, and I'm always like, oh. But it just ma it makes money anyway because it's one of those things that doesn't even have to be good. Like, it's... It's like a football, which is like the worst game like ever to actually play competitively, but it didn't matter because everybody was like, football, yeah, watch me floss, bro. Like, 
it doesn't matter you know it just sells like hotcakes so people can just play like this awful to watch competitive format and yeah i don't know it's like even i guess if they had custom games i'm still always like how do you even make competitive br like do you just make it so like everybody shows up and they all compete like i mean PUBG's done that in the past with their custom stuff i think so i think the PUBG one it was interesting to me to watch more because if if it's popular enough right watching like the squads go up against each other and like hey this fight's gonna happen right if you've got like this, some cool spectator mode where you can see where they're placed on the map because i think PUBG did a really good job of having that aerial view and you can see hey here's dr disrespect's team over here here's whoever else's team and they're about they're on a collision course and they don't know it yet but as you as the spectator know that fight's gonna happen i at least thinking watching those teams like fight each other is more interesting than watching teams just blow through lobbies of people that don't know they're competing and just like having the winner be determined based on that not saying that like those teams aren't really good and they slay lobbies but you know pitting them against each other i think makes for more an interesting competitive scene yeah and I, I think that's probably what the custom games would give you i think that's the only reasonable way to do it you know like <laughs> anything else is just a joke like and i guess what they have going is like you know since it is only 60 players Right, that is at least a little bit smaller of a fraction. You don't need as many teams as like PUBG to get a hundred players on a server, you know. So I don't know, maybe maybe it would work. Yeah, I mean that just makes the most sense to me if they were like, here's custom games. I don't, I, I, yeah, I guess I just, I mean that would be cool because no one's really done like just launch custom games that soon after launch. I mean even PUBG doesn't even like, I think they're just going to be releasing custom games for everybody, or they just did. Like and I think as a part of their, if they decide to do those o OP. I think they need to add some sort of professional looking spectator mode as a part of that, oh, you know, yeah. letting, letting you zoom out of the, like, or the broadcaster zoom out of the camera, pan it over to one of the other battle areas, right? Think about like, there's a fight going on at market. There's a fight at Skulltown. They don't have to break the shot, right? You zoom out to an aerial view, you pan over, you zoom in on the other team and having like a consistent camera would be, I think be really cool for that game. Yeah, it needs. That's like the other problem too. None of those games have like super good tools, you know. Like you need tools yep. that are intuitive for the broadcasters because you can't have, you can't have like ten people running a PUBG broadcast, you know, like, <laughs> you know, right, just exactly. just purely like following teams around, you know, like, yeah, it, it's hard. I feel like, yeah, I don't know how you know you need like, like you said, you need at least the overhead cam, um, you know, there just needs to be like good tracking for that sort of thing. You need toggles. So you can quickly switch to first person perspective um you know i think um like some sort of a perspective where you can go to like third person like but zoomed in instantly you know those are all like problems that you see with a lot of those other games is like it's literally yep. just somebody painting the camera or they have like multiple uh you know multiple things running and then they're switching shots like after the person's already panned and stuff so i always think that's the trickiest thing especially for like first person shooters that make them difficult to watch is a lot of these teams are doing you know are playing off of each other and, and doing really cool strategies but when you're just watching a single person's pov and it's constantly cutting to other teams you lose all of that strategy and you just you just see shooting you don't get to see any sort of like the setup or the flanks or what they're doing i don't think any maybe i mean maybe there have been a couple but i haven't really watched any that really have nailed how to professionally and interesting interestingly like broadcast those it's hard with like the speed of the game too. I think this thing like I think Counter Strike does a good job, but Counter Strike's slow. Right. Yep. <laughs> you know, You're right. like so it like kind of works there. Gears of War is another game, but it's also very small teams and like small environments. Gears of War is easy because they can quickly just transition to somebody who's like in a you know vital situation. Plus, like competitive gears is focused around like last man standing modes. It's not really the same thing here. So it's didn't like, they have a feature where you could do that same thing? It was like a cool way that they panned off of a character to the map and then zoomed in without like cutting yeah yeah i think they did their spectator mode of having like for their tourney stuff was all like 3d uh world That's war ii did cool. that too didn't it call of duty to world war ii had like the whatever they called it like the battle mode view or whatever this was really good yeah theirs was yeah. phenomenal like it was full it was just full 3d and it was done so well that like they pulled the camera up and you could actually see people like shooting each other like a top down uh, you know top down shooter and that's what I like, because then you can see like what these teams, what what makes these teams so good, and what moves they do to help you get better. Instead of just watching somebody just rattle off headshots, you're like okay, I get that they can hit the head, but how did they set up that flank? Yeah, that would be. I guess that would be big. Yeah, I guess we're <laughs> high expectations for <laughs> for. Uh, for yeah, I yeah. guess we'll see if they deliver.
Um, I guess moving beyond that, you know, like just the rest of everything. I mean, we could say like, you know, Sundays, Bethesda and Microsoft, but I guess just in general now it's worth talking. Um, I guess to speak on Microsoft, you know, what do you guys think about them revealing their next gen console? You know, Sony's at least came out and said, I think the interesting situation, the interesting position they find themselves in is Sony has just been like, PlayStation 5 is the thing, here's some numbers. They haven't shown a box. They haven't talked about like pricing or plans. I feel like Microsoft's got a chance to come out and like throw the counter punch and be like, oh yeah, we got a console too. And by the way, this is what it is. And this is literally what it looks like and how it runs and the technology behind it and the price. I could do you that. think they're going to do that? I think it would be crazy. It would be, it would totally be like one of those like, oh shit. <laughs> like up to me, that would be like, that would be the play, right? You make that play. I don't know if they can, I don't know if they're in the position to do it. Um, but I think that would be like highly impressive, especially if, you know, they're really big on carrying forward backwards compatibility. You know, what if you show up and you demo, um, not just, you know, a new, a game that maybe is actually going to release on that platform, but you just say like, oh, Gears of War 5 will be available on PC, Xbox One. And when the Xbox whatever releases, you can just play it and it'll be, you know, visually upgraded. But they got Halo. That's the big thing I'm thinking about, right? Halo Infinite. We know Halo is going to be there. Um, I don't know that we know that Infinite's going to be there. We know like Master Chief Collection is going to be there. But what if Infinite's there and they tease it on the next generation? I mean, that like that's that would be peak Microsoft. You literally take the game that made your box work in the first place and you say, here is a glimpse at Halo Infinite running on the next generation of Xbox. So I, I think that's what they, I think they confirmed that Halo Infinite's going to be there. We'll learn more about it at E3. That's actually probably my most anticipated game for this year. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to do with that. I think that game is going to get a huge resurgence with, especially if they go in on the PC market and, you know, since it's a Microsoft first party, it's going to probably have cross play, cross save to play anywhere stuff that Xbox does. So, you know, that's a, I love that feature because it's not just cross save. That's typically cross play, which is really cool. And yeah, I'm excited for that one. I think that one's going to be. They're doing Gears um, 5 on Steam too, you know, I kind of feel like at this yeah, point, Microsoft's yeah. just saying like, yeah, we're going to do cross play on windows we're gonna do cross play on xbox and we're gonna do cross play with steam we're just gonna tie it all together and like and that was the perfect time for it like let's just do it i do like the the direction they're heading it seems like that you know they're the ones sort of pioneering and pushing for that we'd rather sell you our software and you kind of play it how you want you know obviously they're in the hardware business too but it seems like they're the first ones that are starting at least of like the big you know the big two that are starting to embrace yeah, I mean, it seems like the acknowledgement that like people playing games on Steam isn't a bad thing because they're probably playing on a Windows console anyway, <laughs> on a right, Windows yep. platform anyway, <laughs> you know? So it's like, let's just, let's just do it there. So yeah, I mean, I don't know that we would necessarily see a date from them if they talked about it. And maybe we wouldn't even actually see, um, maybe we don't even see the box, but I think just even showing Halo Infinite and saying, this is Halo Infinite running on the next generation of, of Xbox would be enough to be like, that's a hardcore teaser, you know? That'd be yeah. dropping a bomb, like, to me, so... I guess To me, a lot that. of it depends on the timing. Because I could see, right, if if this box isn't holiday next year, I think from, in terms of, like, their E3 show, they probably want to stagger it. So I could definitely see them coming out showing, you know, very Sony, like, here's what our box can do. Here's some specs. It's backwards compatible. And then next year is the name what it looks like the pricing because then that's the tease for oh by the way it's out in three months it comes out this fall yeah I guess it, it, you know what i mean because they have they ever really revealed account like when what is the window i guess for most next generation reveals been like i can't even remember at this point is it usually like e3 and then it's out in three months right that's usually what it is i think i think so yeah so i almost always remember like e3 pre-order okay i get it in three four months or whatever yeah Oh, so yeah. I'm just thinking, right, depending on the timing, if it's not till next year, they need to like fill two E3s worth of hype. And I feel like if they come in too early, then, you know, next year it devalues the excitement there. But I definitely think they're going to come out showing something or at least talking about it this year. Because I think they need to respond to Sony already. Here's a crazy thought too. And I've been thinking about this. I don't really necessarily think there's, this is probably like a two percentile chance thing. But what if... I feel like Microsoft, uh, you know, they they kind of with the Scorpio, with the you know the um, the One X, they tried to like make that soft transition, right? And they tried to say like, oh, you know, this is just like a up upgrade. They seemed like they you know they released it in a window where people could like not necessarily feel like they had to buy it right away. What if 
all of these games that are coming out for Microsoft the end of this year, right, are available on the Xbox One, yes, the Xbox One X, all that stuff. But what if they've released the next generation of Xbox this year? as like a slow thing and said, but if you want to play those games and have them look even better, like here's the next generation of Xbox. Like you can still play it on those old one games and then maybe they have one exclusive like Infinite, you know, that gets not maybe released on that platform, but just announced. Like, I don't know that that's like a solid business strategy. I feel like everybody always wants to launch a console mm -hmm. with like some, you need to buy this game. But at the same time, like if you're trying to like get people, it's, it's just, I just feel like things are different now. You know, it's not the way it was. You're not necessarily just like selling this box that like you have to have in order to play. You now have like, you know, games that already look really good on platforms. A lot of people are going to think are perfectly fine with the way they are. So it's like, I, I wonder like, how do you, you know, justify like another four or $500 purchase from the consumer? And like, do you that do would be crazy slower... too. I'm, I think they're going to come and counter punch with their X cloud stuff too. Right. I think they've been working on something very similar to what Google Stadia is. We haven't heard too much about it. You know, I know that they're working on that. I wonder if they're going to, you know, very similar to what you're thinking, Tony is like, maybe that box doesn't drop, but Hey, we've got a cloud service too. We're doing the same freaking thing that Google's doing. But hey, we've got Game Pass. We've got all this other stuff that could just bury them because we're giving you a library of hundreds of titles right, right. And they just that Google doesn't have right now. The PC Game Pass, right? So if they just did like a bundle thing where it's like, it's just, they unified it, right? Like here's just, here's Games Pass. You subscribe yep. and you get games on PC, games on cloud, games on Xbox. Yeah, that would be ridiculous. They'd be, they'd be <laughs> insane. They've got an opportunity there to like, just totally make Google Stadia relevant because they've got, the history in the library to do it i don't know if that's what they're planning but like in my mind that's what you do is like go bury <laughs> go bury google right off <laughs> yeah just say yeah what are you doing get out of here all right i guess uh op what, what what let's talk some anticipated games op what do you got on your list man like what are some games that you're like i know you're gonna say doom eternal so i'll just doom eternal i'll just sure. remind you that yeah. it's gonna be there on sunday <laughs> i'm excited for that i can't wait to see uh, more of it dude for sure. Watch Dogs Legion recently leaked. Um, look, look, sounds really cool. You can play as any of the NPCs. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Um, like the, I don't, I don't understand where they're going with it, but I, I I'm like already on board because I liked Watch Dogs too a lot. I thought it was a really good game, and I just like, I like the. London like, seems like a good setting for that game. Yeah, too. It just you know. feels like it. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Cameron. yeah, I just, I, yeah, I agree. Like they're doing like the whole post-Brexit kind of like I feel like you're pushing into like dystopian type environment. Then you can get kind of dark with it, and you know, I feel like Watch Dogs Two was like the lighthearted take on you know like little small like rebellious organizations, um, and this kind of feels like in some way it could be like oh well all those little rebellions like failed and like here's the direction that things ended up going, you know, and like did you guys finish too? No, I did yeah because i played i played through all of one for whatever reason never really got into two i don't know if it was just because like i wasn't really into like and i don't i don't even know if this is true so keep me honest but it seemed a little bit more lighthearted. you're kind of talking it was a little grittier but watchdogs one was was fairly gritty it was kind of dark that appealed to me watchdogs two whether it just being because it's like hey sunny san francisco but felt a little bit more like peppy to me and like wasn't quite my jam but i heard it was really good yeah, I think, well, I think like one with Hayden Pierce's character, uh, he was very, um, uh, sorry, Aiden Pierce. He was very, he was a very like miserable dude, right? I think we kind of talked about it last time we talked about Watch Dogs. Mm -hmm. He was like a pissy guy. And so that carried over into like the whole uh, premise of the game. Watch Dogs 2 was more about like these youths, you know, trying to be like, you know, we're this hacker group and we're going to shut down all these terrible people. You know, the one mission even takes a play on that Martin Schelt guy who, you know, the dude who hacked up, or jacked up pharma prices. So people were like, you know, basically dying because they couldn't afford insulin. You actually go like blackmail him in the game and stuff. Um, so I think, yeah, no, the game was like, I wouldn't say lighthearted, but it was less less about like the violence, you know? I think like Watch Dogs was literally like, the first game was literally like a violent game. Like, yeah, yeah it can, was like super dark. You can be non-lethal, but like, here's all these guns, which is a lot of people actually thought it was, a lot of people felt, myself included, that Watch Dogs 2 would have been better if you had no lethal options. The game actually gives you a ton of non-lethal options and it makes a lot of sense like because the characters you portray are like they're hanging out in their like sneaky hidden hideout in the back of a coffee shop you know where people play tabletop games like these aren't people who want to murder anyone you know they want to go like above and beyond to not do that and that was like the one weird thing Watch Dogs 2 did but like the first gun they even give you in the game is non-lethal <laughs> so yeah I just think that was it was it's a very different direction it comes across as 
maybe the world is darker, but like your way of dealing with that is definitely not dark, I guess you could say. Right, yep. So, uh, anything else, OP? Anything, any other big ones for you? Uh, the new Pokemon game. I mean, we've already seen stuff about it. Oh. It's coming out later this year, but I think we're all just... hyped for that one, right? That looks yeah, ridiculous now, amazing. man. Giant Kaiju Pokemon raid fights, like, what? And the multiplayer seems like, yeah, that it would be fun. Yeah, that's not something I expected. Like, I mean, Pokemon's always had like multiplayer, but not like this, right? It seems like them kind of like finally stepping into the <laughs> into the modern era with Pokemon being like, we're actually going to do some really different things. I'm definitely super excited for that one. Uh, how about you, Count? What's on your top top three? You so there's three? a couple. I don't know if they're on my top yet, but I feel like we need to talk about them. We need to talk about the Avengers. Mm. Finally going to show up. Yeah, I'm hearing crazy did you read, things about Did you guys that. see like the the whatever little press release they had on it? No, mm -hmm. I've just seen like rumors, of, like people like making rumors on that press release. It kind of sounds like for yeah, and it, maybe it's a little bit of that too. But it, people are sort of leaning into they're going into like the the servicey aspect. They talk a little bit about co-op. You know, I, I don't really know much about it. I'm excited, but I'm kind of nervous too. Like, what direction they're going to go or what style this game is. And I'm trying to figure out, you know, would you guys think you're going to play as an Avenger? Or do you think it's going to be one of those, like, especially if it's, a, you know, looty shooty kind of a game, you know, are you creating your own character, DC universe superhero style where, you know, the NPCs are the people that join your party and fight with you are the Avengers, but like you're creating your own character with your buddies. I would definitely hate it if they did that. I'll say, I'll say this. I feel like that'd yeah. be, I feel like that'd be a huge waste of the brand, right? I feel like I see a lot of people talking about that though, and that's what makes me a little bit nervous. Uh, like, I want to yeah. play as freaking Iron Man and fly Terrible, all over man. in open world and do cool stuff. And it's like, who's developing it? Dweeb. Is Square actually developing it as well as publishing it? And Crystal Dynamics, yeah. Oh, Crystal Dynamics is working on it. Okay, I couldn't remember who was like actually doing the development for. Okay, no, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I feel like it makes sense to just come out and make like I've heard about that too, right? I've heard people like I've seen lots of rumors like, oh, is this gonna be the Avengers Destiny edition? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I was like <sighs> I mean, I feel like it makes sense for it to be it's absolutely gonna be a live service game. Let's just put that out of the way. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you've got a massive license and the people who the people who, you know, own that license who are licensed out to those teams are definitely like, we gotta make as much money out of this thing as we can. Like Exactly. You know, yeah. I guess it's a matter of like what was Crystal and like any other teams that work with them on it able to do on what was probably some pretty strict guidelines of like people need to be able to play this game for the next ten years type deal, right? I'm trying to think about like cosmetics and stuff, like I mean, can you go and deck out Captain America and give him goofy looking cosmetics or yeah, you know, maybe you can, but <laughs> yeah, I I just think, you know, maybe rather than, I mean, I guess on the selling front of that, yeah, but like, I guess if they, if they, so like, go back to basics, right? Like, make an Avengers game, you let people play as all the Avengers. Like, you get as many in there as you can, right? However many the team feels like they can fit in, the ones that matter the most. And then you've at least got all of their alternate uniforms, you know, so that like cranks things up a bit. And then maybe make a game that doesn't necessarily need like constantly changing appearances like worry about like the gameplay loop in a different way i don't i don't know man that's like a super difficult one because you know what game tried to do that was uh i don't know if you played like the of uh, the um the marvel like mmo the top down like one it got canceled recently i can't remember the name of it to save the life of me this is literally like it's so, an arpg it's a marvel arpg yep. you know where you play as whatever x-man you know all the characters um, and what they so did, Tony. I hope that you're right, but like the you know Activisions or the EAs of the world that are probably helping fund some of this, just pessimistic me says, no, 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 no. We're gonna put in a bunch of cool looking cosmetics, and you're gonna pay 15 bucks to look like this. You know? It's just hard because like they. I mean, that's the thing with comics, at least though, right? Is like, regardless of who owns the main license, there's then like a bunch of complications for the individual character licenses. You know, so you can't just like give Captain America a pink bunny hat type deal, you know, and that's where I, I guess that just comes across as very interesting to me. Like, what the hell kind of game did you make, you know, like <laughs> with like some yep. serious, some pretty hefty limiting factors on licensing for the characters and their appearances. So I don't so know. I guess we'll see where that one goes. I just it made my list because I thought I think for a while now we've been saying every year like, oh, we're going to see that new Avengers game. And every year it's not we, we at all that i'm pretty sure they came out and said like no we'll see it at the the square conference on monday 
Yeah, definitely expected it to be there last year. Now, yeah, now it's it's for sure now. This Monday we'll see it, so. And then the other one that I'm excited for is the Final Fantasy VII Re- Oof. Is that like, did we get a release date for that? <laughs> no, no, dude. <laughs> They debuted, so they debuted that right. I think that it existed. It was a real thing in 2015. Yeah, I remember that way back when. Though. Like, Jesus. lost my mind with everybody else in the world. It's like, holy crap, it's actually happening. Because I think people have been wanting and asking for that for as long as I can remember, right? That people are like, remake it, remake it. Finally confirm it's a thing. They dropped, how long ago was that o OP that they dropped that like little teaser? Maybe a month? Maybe like a month or so, yeah. And so they, you know, you're in Midgar. They tease, you know, they remade Cloud a little bit. He's not as scrawny. People were complaining about that, but they still haven't shown some of the key characters. They haven't shown any of the environments outside of, you know, the starting area in that game. And it's like, okay, so they teased it at that state of play a couple weeks ago, hoping that we see something. I don't really know where that's going to show up because maybe it's Square, I guess, because Sony's not going to be there. And I know they've got, you know, first on PlayStation rights, I think, to that game. So. I'm hoping that maybe they come out and actually show you again, you know, a slice of gameplay. So I think people are starving for that. Yeah, that's like, uh, I mean, I will say I'm actually kind of excited for it because that was the first Final Fantasy game I ever played. I, I didn't, this is well before like knowing what Final Fantasy was. I just bought the PC game somewhere and barely ran on my PC at the time. But I like went through all the horrors of loading the game for four or five hours straight so I could play it. And I was like, this is cool. I don't know what I'm doing, but it's yeah. cool. So it would be nice to come back to it. Plus, aren't they like overhauling the combat, right? They're going to do like the real time combat from the most recent Final Fantasy. Are you that correct? I think it's like a cool hybrid mix. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of inspiration from the like the Kingdom Hearts battle style, the newest Final Fantasy. And it'll probably be a little bit of vintage something. But like, you know, OP, I don't think we've seen a summon yet. You know, everybody's kind of waiting to see what those look like. You know, what's the materia system look like? You know, I think there's a lot of cool stuff they could show. I'm hoping to just get a little bit more because I'm on that hype train since 2015. And I'm just waiting Jesus for that freaking game to like progress a little bit. I have a release date, right? Like <laughs> at some point here. Hopefully. Oh man, yeah, that's a that's a pretty crazy one. So oddly enough, it's like I'm excited for the Square <laughs> Square conference. You know, if they're if these are where these are gonna. Yeah, that's two that's two pretty big ones in there. I guess I'm definitely looking forward to those. Um, I guess. What about you, Tony? What's on your everything list? Else. There's definitely a lot I'll say on my list. We talked about Infinite. That's definitely there. Doom Eternal, definitely there. Um, I mean, outside of that, I would say Gears 5. That's a huge one for me. I think Gears 5 looks bonkers. There's like rumors that they've got like not a full blown open world, but more of an open world structure, which I think Gears is like ripe for that. That game has like some of the best monster design. I think Gears is like, it's just like one of those games where I'm not going to like tell people like you should like it. Like, you, why don't you like it? but I still think it's super underappreciated and underrated. Like, can you name a franchise that has come out and produced? Like, if you really just look at the monsters that have existed in the Gears game since the original game, they've got like more monsters than most like, you know, anime games, ha like anime shows have, right? Like over the course of their entire existence, like every game, they make some new crazy monster that has some great gameplay mechanic. And like, I just think that's super impressive. So I would love like a somewhat open world from that. So I guess we'll see where that goes. Super soaked in the story I was, yeah, I was for just all talking that. to a friend yesterday about it, actually, and we were having a discussion on why Gears isn't more popular than it is. And I'm wondering, and maybe the open world's the thing, but what do you guys think that, you know, that series needs to do to, you know, get back into the spot? Because like, I think, to your point, Tony, it's always really good. It's got, you know, interesting characters. Visually, it's impressive. But I feel like just it always demos the same. You know, it's just the same Gears, but like another one. And I'm wondering what they need to do to mix up that formula or like take that next step forward. Yeah, I mean, I kind of think it's just going to be it's going to be one of those games that maybe never gets big. Right. Because I think everybody, a lot of people who play the like the campaign play it. And that's why it always sells well. The game always like like always meets sales expectations. And then some I know Gears 4 was like the best selling game for the franchise and one of Microsoft's best selling best selling first party titles. Um, but then it's just the multiplayer is like way too hardcore niche. You know, it's like Titanfall 2 you know pick like you know your favorite like movement focused or really high skill ceiling focused shooter and gears 5 is like right there like that game is multiplayer like people who don't who haven't played it their whole lifetime try and play and they're just like oh like what this guy just like bounced around the corner and just took my face off you know with this <laughs> with the yep. shotgun in five seconds and i love it i adore the multiplayer i've also played it my entire life so i'm just kind of like leave it as is 
who cares if it never gets massive type deal, you know? Because that would mean, I think... See, that... my thought is I think they could take Horde mode and evolve that. Because you're going to have your campaign people, you're right, that are just want to play the campaign. You've got your hardcore multiplayer people that probably don't want that to change because it's got a niche there. But I think, like, the Horde mode or some sort of your competitive or cooperative space, you know, maybe that goes into the open world. They expand that. They make that a little bit more interesting. I think that's where they've got a little bit of area where they can, you know take it into the next gen you know show off something impressive give us a huge open world with more varied than just waves you know i don't know if they're on 2.0 3.0 whatever it might be but that seems like an area where they can take a leap forward to me yeah the last word i mean gears 4 had a really good horde mode it was still very much based around utilizing the multiplayer maps you know probably for resource reasons but it definitely yeah. you know stepped it up a little bit i agree that would be cool to see them i mean i guess it would be cool in general to see them you know like evolve some sort of a mode like they did horde mode that's cool but you know, in the past, they yeah, tried just things. like outside of the multiplayer maps, maybe, you know what I mean? Like yeah. here's some typically designed that are really fun to do horde mode on. It's not just, hey, go play it on the same multiplayer maps you've been playing. Yeah, give us something new to kind of like explore the universe a little bit more, new gameplay mechanic. Yeah, I agree. That'd be pretty cool. Um, outside of that one. Oh, uh, Dying Light 2. That's going to be there. I'm really excited for that. I don't know if you guys are fans of the original game at all, mm -hmm. but this one's like, just go in like the whole next level. I mean, they're doing a bunch of crazy stuff with story. Chris Avalon's like doing some writing for them. But then in terms of gameplay mechanics, I feel like they're finally kind of like looking to progress the whole parkour thing, right? You know, we had like the Mirror's Edge games. They did parkour in the first Dying Light. This new system has like a bunch of advanced parkour movement systems. Plus you also have like a stamina meter now. So you actually have to take into consideration like how you navigate the environment, which I feel like is something that like, I mean, think about Assassin's Creed, any other game where it's like, you can just climb walls infinitely. Um, you know, there was no real like risk or reward to that. But that's actually one of my favorite things about Breath of the Wild is that you have that freedom of being able to climb anything, but you have to think strategically about it because you don't have an infinite stamina meter. So I'm really, I'm excited to see what they do with that. I mean, Dying Light was just like super underrated game with a pretty shitty story. So hopefully this one will have like a really good story and just kind of take things to the next level. Uh, I think that's kind of like, I, mean, I think we kind of crossed over into everything else I was super stoked for. I'm trying to remember if there's any other things. I have that were... one thing more I have to ask you guys, and this is like a, just, are there any things that they could do at E3 this year that would just make you be like, holy crap, I'm stunned. Not just like, oh, that's really cool. I expected that. But is there anything that could happen that would you just be like, holy crap, I thought I'd never see that or you know what I mean? Like that ultra hype thing that could happen on your most desired wish list. What is that thing? Just in general, you mean? Like, doesn't matter? Yeah, anything? just like if you could have what you want, what's like the bomb that would drop at E3 that you're like, holy crap, this is the best. E3. Hmm. Do you have any of those? I mean, I guess kind of what I talked about with the Microsoft thing, right? Like if they demo Halo Infinite on the next generation of platform, on the next gen console, I'd be, that'd be big enough for me. <laughs> really okay okay yeah i mean halo is definitely like dude if they rolled the clip right and then we get another halo trailer number one i'm already gonna be like just oozing with emotions because it's halo that's like my my youth right but then if they're like oh also it was on the next generation and you know blah 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 yeah that would be a big one for me i guess i don't really i can't really okay, I guess, you have any on that. so if they announced the new legend of dragoon or uh nba nfl street i would i'd jump out of my chair <laughs> I guess that's what I'm talking about, dude. I guess on the game front, yeah. Dream yeah. higher, dream bigger. I guess on the game front, like Splinter Cell would definitely be a big one for me. Oof. I think everybody wants that, right? We all want, yeah. we all want new Splinter Cell. Like, bring it back with, like, full blown Sam Fisher story. Michael Ironside's back. Uh, give us like, you know, like a dynamic world that we can kind of like, you know, decide how we tackle the missions that are in point. I mean, they did in Blacklist. They had the the freaking giant airplane. So give us something else. Uh, you know, let us like have our own way of kind of like navigating things. Bring back the co-op because the game's always had co-op. Make crazy fleshed out co-op system. More importantly, though, bring back spies versus mercs, man, and like just make it the ultimate like asymmetrical experience. Yeah, okay. that'd be you one for me. Mine? Okay, this is uh, and I don't think I don't think I'm that far out of the realm on this one. But what I hope is that when on Microsoft's conference, whatever, you bring out whoever the whatever doug bowser from nintendo comes out and it's okay. like you know what microsoft we're bringing xbox live fully to nintendo switch you know because they've already got like cuphead and a couple of those games are coming out and they just like microsoft and nintendo are going to partner up and be buddies 
freaking lose my mind. I think that would be so cool. Yeah. There kind of seems like there's lots of rumors right around something yeah, like that yeah. happening, right? Like just Xbox like somehow coming to Switch, which would make sense from a streaming perspective. If your Switch just became like a streaming device and you could yep. literally use, you know, the X Cloud to stream games to your yes. Switch. I mean, that literally makes that's the so thing I want. Sense. <laughs> that's the thing I want. I'd lose my mind. In my ideal world, it would have been Reggie. You know, Reggie and Phil coming out just like bro hugging. But I guess it can be Doug. Watch, well, if you want to dream big, man, Reggie can come out anyway just to be there because he's Reggie. Just... <laughs> <laughs> or they can just like they can have him do the intro and he's like, I'm no longer the Nintendo of America, but <laughs> He just Reggie comes out holding on the Microsoft conference with his Nintendo Switch, and it's got an Xbox Live logo on it. I came out of retirement for this. Zooms in on it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my dream. <laughs> the crazy thing is, like, you know, we talk about like just making smart decisions to crush Stadia. Like, great, Stadia is like, hey, you can just hook it up to whatever device you have. But what's more enticing than having a cloud service available on a platform you already play a shitload of mobile games on? Like that's the genius of like the switch thing if it was real right yeah. like i'm already taking this on the plane oh and guess what it's got a nice screen it's got a controller built in i don't gotta futz around with bluetooth controllers i don't gotta have a stupid stand on the back of my phone case or get an ipad like i can literally just play breath of the wild and then play gears 5. <laughs> yeah it'd be insane i'd lose my mind so that's where that's where that's a good lose your mind one for sure <laughs> i agree i agree with that one <laughs> um what was got? i know there's a coffee like a couple more like small like not small games but oh but it has the stuff though right apparently we're gonna see more of uh more starfield there's like chances that starfield will be there considering it was announced last year at e3 we didn't see any footage of it there's also lots of rumors going around now for elder Scrolls 6 but i don't think we're really going to hear any more about that because i think bethesda made it pretty clear like starfield first elder Scrolls 6 later i forgot about starfield I'm like, it's hard because I'm like at a point with Bethesda where they just make a lot of wonky game design decisions. And I know everybody like loves Skyrim to death, but I mean, I, and I like Skyrim. There's definitely like stuff for me there. But like when you actually like objectively look at Skyrim outside of the whole like oozy gooey, like they make really ambient, beautiful worlds to spend time in. There's just a lot of like super dated game design. They've kind of been like you know relying on and i don't know if that's just because like their engine has made things difficult for them and it's slow development time i still hope starfield is like that like re restart point for them right to be like we got a new engine it's been better for our team They're, like we took this break and like you know here's like us kind of like re you know our rebirth if you will like i don't know i guess we'll see with that one bethesda is I feel like I'm on thin ice with Bethesda conferences. Not that I, I don't like their games, because I do like a lot of them, but there's a part of me too that felt a little bit weird last year, like when they did announce Elder Scrolls. I feel like that was just for shock factor, just because they ha they have to come out and like drop a bomb at the end. I feel like- But I, I know that they're working on it, but like that yeah. game can't be even close to coming out. No, it's not. I feel like they just had to, right? I feel like unfortunately, like when you're a studio that's like so well known for one franchise, right? I mean, think about like Titanfall, right? <laughs> like in respawn at this point like the 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 titanfall community that can't stop thinking about the fact that they got apex rather than titanfall you know would do anything to just hear one little confirmation of the existence of titanfall and i think that was totally mm -hmm. bethesda right it was like yes we want to do this new thing with starfield also fallout 76 is going to come out and it's going to be super unfinished so let's talk about elder scrolls 6 just to kind of let people know right and i think that kind of goes back to what we talked about with communities being like just just give us just let us know what's the deal right just let us know it exists and i'm like on the front of in that case like no i didn't need to know that you were making an elder scrolls 6 i could have figured that out on my own number one because of course you're making more elder scrolls but like yeah i agree i didn't i didn't need to hear the announcement but i do think for them it was maybe a necessary evil i guess for the and i feel like community. yeah that's the that's the marketing team coming in being like no, we need to say it exists because we need to keep people interested and give them the carrot or whatever. But yeah, this year was just another, it was another rumor year this year too. They already, I already saw like a couple hours ago, people were talking rumors that Elder Scrolls six is going to be designed to be played for 10 years. And I'm just like, that's such a vague statement to make. Like also it's not a strong thing to say. If, number one, when people are really burnt out on games as a service, because most of them are massive disappointments. Like we talked about, just a couple, a couple episodes on the show. How uh, we all just feel like it's just an excuse to just, you know, not give the devs enough time to do what they got to do. And at the same time, the last game they made that was Games as a Service was is, is in a pretty rough place and not really getting that much better that much more quickly. You know, seventy six, obviously. 
Yeah, it's rough. You know what I'm honestly looking forward to now? I want to see, like, another Elder Scrolls Online, online announcement, because that game is really good. <laughs> like, let ZeniMax come out and be like, we're revamping the graphics for Elder Scrolls Online. Like, I feel like that game could suddenly get really popular with a lot of people if people really knew what it was like to play it now compared to what it was at launch. Because to me, it's like, it is literally, it is better than Skyrim. Skyrim will always have the mood and the atmosphere, but, like, as far as actual Elder Scrolls games go, like, SO is a really, really good Elder Scrolls game definitely better than Skyrim and like on the level of Oblivion with me so I guess I'll, I'm really excited to see them talk about that game and I know they will they just it's like a yearly thing now with yeah with that um small game to mention I don't know if you guys like you know obviously I think we all played Tony Hawk back in the day but I don't know if you guys were big skate fans skate I forgot what is that skate new game two, called skate three session is the Microsoft back session one. that's yeah. the one so there's a couple games there's one that's actually out on Steam um that is like session it's going they're going like the hardcore route where it's like they don't really have a scoring system it's just about like literally letting you go out and skate like real world skate spots but session is the one that microsoft picked up and that's going to be probably at microsoft show and i'm actually really stoked for that because I, I uh i played the like kickstarter demo way back when and it's actually a really fun like really rewarding experience you know rather than focusing on like the arcade chaos of the tony hawk games um it's like taking skate three to the next level by actually allowing you to independently control your feet so you can even turn on or off uh like an automatic foot stance fo uh, foot stance thing so the idea is like your left um your left trigger is your left foot your right trigger is your right foot but if you go into switch you actually have to like remember it backwards because you're skating switch <laughs> Oh, interesting. And so you can turn that off if you don't want to, but I love that that's there. I love that they make, like, the idea of just doing a kickflip to, like, a tail slide a difficult thing because in real life, it's a difficult thing. So, yeah, I think that's one to look out for just randomly because if you're into that sort of thing, it could be cool. But um, Yeah, a couple other quick hitters, too. You know, not not necessarily there's more that we'll learn, but I, I think they said Cyberpunk might be back this year. I yeah, know they right. were at Xbox last year. I'll be curious to see if we get more of that game. Yeah, I wonder. They said they're going to be there. Like, it's confirmed they're going to be there. I guess I'm just curious as to whether or not they're going to have, like, a big showing, you know, or if it's... I mean, we got that meaty, like, hour-long demo last year, and it's like, how do you top that? Yeah, I guess, right, just continue to... I'd like to see more of their systems. I guess the demo, to me, was, like, a good demonstration of, like, here's the world and, like, kind of the way you'll be able to manipulate it somewhat. But the thing that I'm still most curious about that game is, like, I want, like, a better glimpse of, like, how I can make decisions as a player because right now it seems very like you're this gun runner type person like and that's what you get to play as which is fine but like how can i influence those decisions i mean one of the best things about playing the witcher is that you get to kind of decide what kind of Geralt Geralt is is he like a complete dick witcher who's just like i ain't doing anything for you unless you give me money or is he somebody who kind of like has a bit of a heart who's like yeah that person's gonna die in like the next five minutes if i don't go kill this beast you know and I feel like that's important in a dystopian world <laughs> or like it's super oppressive and like the world's coming down, you know, on top of you, like to be able to make those sorts of decisions. So I guess I'm kind of curious about those systems. Yeah. The other one really quick too, I know we're, we're getting it towards the end here is I do want to see more about Call of Duty Modern Warfare. You know, I love shooters. I'm excited to see what the new engine they got going on. I heard some really cool things about how tactical this one is kind of going in the reimagining. Um, I think that's going to be a cool one. Although I'm curious where they're going to show up if they're showing up because, right, I still think they've got that exclusive deal with Sony. So do they show up at Microsoft? That feels like a weird thing to me. Do I don't really know how that game is still have the exclusive gonna... deal or is that over with now? I, I thought they did. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I I'm thought just curious, they still yeah. did. I have no idea on that. I mean, it's, I mean, just because crossplay doesn't mean that their deal's done. So, But I can't imagine that game won't be there, right? Like what, can you ever think of a time where Call of Duty didn't show up at e No, I feel like it would make sense for them to show you know, at this point, like a, a glimpse of one of their missions, you know, single player, not multiplayer stuff yet. Yeah, hopefully some of the stuff behind closed doors that like journalists got to see, maybe they'll expose that, but I am excited to see more about that game. Yeah, I'm curious, I guess, just like on the front of the mechanics side of it more than anything else, because it really is like, if you're going, I've said it before, going boots on the ground, like I feel like you gotta like, you know, you gotta find a way to push to your roots while also doing something new. And the idea of the game maybe getting a little bit more slow paced, not necessarily saying it's like Rainbow Six Siege all of a sudden, but throwing you know, some more tacticalness into the fray, maybe even on the level of like the insurgency games, I think would be interesting. So yeah, I okay, guess that's, that's gonna be an interesting one for sure. Uh, OP, you got anything else, man? Is there any other? 
bits um, you want to talk about? Pretty much everything. I know we could we could just I've go heard. for another half an hour talking about Doom Eternal. I'm definitely excited for that. It's gonna be. Yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be an interesting one. I think that's really it for the big games, though. I'm kind of just like yeah, scrolling. I think there's anything else that I'm really excited for. I guess I guess I'll see when I see more. Yeah. And yeah, it'd bunch... be fun to do our reactions one where we actually get to see what showed up and what you know what we're. Hiding. Yeah, definitely. I think it'd be fun too. Maybe if we we could probably do a whole episode just on like surprise games. You know, I know there's like some weird some weird rumors there like a judge dread game from rebellion they've got a new project they're working on um there's like small hints of dragon age 4 also baldur's gate 3 got announced the team who worked on uh divinity is doing that so that's cool that's pretty wild that that game exists yeah yeah that's just nuts man <laughs> i'm excited for that but yeah i guess we'll see we'll definitely uh, come back and talk about it that's gonna do it for this uh this week's episode though guys thank you so much for joining us e3 was kind of already started so if you're unaware ea play for those of you guys who are super interested in like star wars apex respawn stuff that's saturday uh sunday you've got bethesda and microsoft and then monday square enix and i'm sure there's a bunch of other random things i think devolver digital is probably like killing someone on stage again so keep an eye out for that and that's gonna do it from us <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you all in the next one